they finally did it. Amazon gave us a release date. And no, this isn't another video where I speculate. We have the real thing. But we also have some images from the season to break down. A super cryptic teaser with a hidden message. A message to a fan from Yosha Stradowski that was just awesome. And some possible season two episode titles. So let's get to it. Quickly, before we get to all of this news that I am excited to talk about, check out this spot right here for spoiler warnings if you care about spoilers in the news. And please like the video and subscribe to the channel to tell YouTube that others should see this video too. It helps a lot. But let's dive in. All right, I won't bury the lead. Amazon announced the release date for season two, and it's coming a lot sooner than I thought it would. But rather than me just telling you the date, I'll let Yosha Shradowski say it for me. And for a little context, for the past 449 days, Twitter user and Wheel of Time fan Default Rand has been tweeting at Amazon to release the season two release date. In fact, just two days ago, he tweeted this. Day 448 of me asking at the Wheel of Time to announce the season two release date. And yesterday, the Wheel of Time Twitter account replied with this video and the caption. From now on, default Rand, let 449 be your lucky number. Here is that video. And on day 449, you get your answer. There are neither beginnings nor endings to the turning of the Wheel of Time, but season two has a beginning. And that beginning is on September 1st. See you then. So there you have it. The Wheel of Time season two will be hitting our TV screens on September 1st, 2023. But for those of us in North America, what that actually means is that the show will come out on the evening of August 31st, which is a Thursday, and it also happens to be my birthday. So thanks a lot for the birthday present, Amazon. This is earlier than the November release I was thinking that we would get, at least lately, and it isn't that far away. Geeky Eerie from WattSeries.com posted on Twitter a breakdown of the timeframes between the release date being announced, the trailers, and more. What's really interesting from this data is that the first look is kind of only the beginning. We should expect a teaser trailer here within a month of this, which I, I think makes sense. What I am most excited about, though, is that we should have some great stuff to break down and discuss going forward. But Yosha's video wasn't the only place that the release date was announced. The Wheel of Time Twitter account also released a very short clip of the Wheel of Time logo with the release date toward the end. Now I'll play it for you and you tell me if you see anything weird. Notice anything? Yeah, me too. There was just a couple frames there, but there was a very obviously placed Easter egg for all of us to find. Now this is some script written in the old tongue. What it says is something that we all assumed would be in this season, but this is not only confirmation, but it also just gets me generally very excited. The translated words here written in the old tongue are, the grave is no bar to my call. And if you don't remember what that is, those are the words inscribed on the Horn of Valir. Now that's the horn that calls back the dead heroes of the horn to fight against the Shan Chan at the end of the Great Hunt. So given that the horn is blown at the end of the Great Hunt, I think this strongly indicates that we are going to see the Horn of Valir blown this season. I cannot wait to see how they choose to represent this visually. So what are your thoughts on that teaser logo clip there? Let me know in the comments of the video what you think. So now before getting to the first look pictures and breaking all of them down, let me first mention a major announcement that we made a few days back. For those of you that are not aware, I help run a major Wheel of Time convention here in Columbus, Ohio called WattCon. This year, our guests are Michael Livingston, the author of Origins of the Wheel of Time, Michael Kramer and Kate Redding, the beloved audio book readers for the Wheel of Time book series on audiobook, Maria Simmons, Robert Jordan's personal assistant and member of Team Jordan. We made a couple big announcements about the convention that I wanted to repeat right now. First of all, we have until June 19th to get registered to be in person at the event. So head to WattCon.com if you are interested in coming to the convention so you can grab your ticket before you can't anymore. But secondly, if you are not able to make that trip in person, we have an amazing virtual ticket option that gives you access to all of the main programming 
all of the panels, and even a new option for some VIP content from home. This was a huge hit last year. We thought it went really, really well. So if you want to be a part of the convention, but you can't make it in person, sign up for a virtual ticket. You can get those at watcon.com as well. Also, all of the panels and their descriptions are up on the website right now as well as we get closer and closer to July 14th when WatCon starts. It also sounds like we're going to have a lot more show stuff to discuss now too. So last year, Amazon gave us some never-before-seen deleted scenes from season one to show at the convention. I can't promise we'll have anything this year, but you won't know if you're not there. I hope to meet all of you at WatCon. We'll be exciting. So there was one more place that Amazon announced season two's release date. And that was, of course, on Entertainment Weekly's website. They released a first look article, just as they did for season one, that gave us some pictures and announced the release date. Now, I want to take a look at the pictures together and we'll break down what's in them. So let's first start with this picture, a picture that I am sure will not only cause some discussion, but maybe even some frustration from some fans who want an exact adaptation scene by scene from the books. In this picture, we have in the middle someone who is likely High Lady Suroth a member of the Sean Chan blood and the leader of the Forerunners. Behind this group, though, you see some Sean Chan soldiers lined up in formation, and at her side are a few characters that we know and some that we don't. Behind her, we have Loyal, appearing to be in servants' robes. Now, the Ogier are seen as honored in the Sean Chan culture and often serve as what are called gardeners in the Death Watch garb. He appears to have the role of an honored servant, which I would imagine happens later in the season, as we've seen in a behind-the-scenes clip that we got almost like a year ago now, that Loyal was around when the Shinarans and Perrin were captured. This would imply that Loyal was a part of that and somehow made it into Suroth's service. We'll have to see a little bit more about that. To Suroth's right in the picture, we have Ferris Ferris playing the Dark One. But if you've read the books, and again, spoilers, this is a Shamael. Now, this interaction does not happen in the books. This is clearly a part of the adaptation, and without any context, I'm not going to comment on whether or not it's a good choice. I have no idea. Uh, I, until I've seen the show, I really can't make a comment on that. I agreed with some of the adaptation choices they made in season one. I disagreed with a great many. But just as last season, I'll reserve my judgment until I see the full thing. I know that changes have to happen to contents of 15 book series into a TV show that'll make it seven or eight seasons, and they're only getting eight episodes. So... There are going to be some changes. We'll have to wait and see what this one means. But on her right is the actress Jessica Boone, who is likely playing her voice. Next up, we have a picture of Donal Finn, now taking over the role of Matt. Now he's crying, and this is likely when he's captive or staying in the White Tower. We previously saw an image like this of him, so I'm interested to see where they take Matt's character, as this was one of the larger changes in season one, most of that due to Barney Harris leaving the show. This picture is of Rosamund Pike as Moraine, in a newer dress that we haven't seen her in before. This appears to be formal wear, I guess. She's in what looks like the foregate in Kyrian. We know from Rosamund's video that she released a while back that she is going to be taking, that Moraine, I should say, is going back to Kyrian in season two. And this matches the other scenes that we've seen with Rand walking around what appears to be the foregate. This picture is of Egwene in novice white. Inside the White Tower, likely cleaning dishes and pots in the kitchens. I hope that we get more scenes in the tower as I want them to flesh out the set and the time in the White Tower and make it feel massive. One of my complaints from season one was how the tower felt like it was like three rooms big. The thing is described as massive in the books, and I want it to feel that way in the show. For a video talking about some things you might not know about the White Tower, check this one out. I have it linked up here somewhere. I bet you would like it. Learn a little bit more about the White Tower and how big it is. This is a picture of Lan riding on Mandarb's back, or what I would assume is Mandarb. They did send the horses away in episode seven of season one, so it will be interesting to see how they got them back. Uh, here we have Nynaeve in what looks like her shift, as they'd say it in the books at least. She is in a room that we saw Rafe sitting in during the Jordan Con video. This is very likely during her accepted test, as these are the arches that we saw behind Rafe, right behind her. I really can't wait to see this scene. Rafe had mentioned that it would be dramatic, there'd be blood and water and all kinds of stuff, and I'm hoping it's as powerful as they said it would. This picture is of Rand with a hood up over his head. Now, he appears to be in Falma, and you can see the hilt of his sword sticking up from behind his hood. He has a look of determination on his face, and that makes me think that he's about to fight somebody. So maybe Turok or Shamael or somebody. Kind of looks like he's ready to be a badass here. 
And lastly, we have this picture of Avienda and Perrin. Now, Avienda is veiled, meaning she is about to stab somebody. Perrin is wearing clothing that we saw on him in the behind the scenes clip. But this person back here is Masima, played by Arnis Federovicius. He appears to be dressed in Shan Chan armor, even though we know he's Shinarin, which again leads me to believe that all of the Shinarins were captured and forced to swear oaths. One other thing of note here, and you can see this little arm right here in a white cloak. Is it possible that there are white cloaks about to fight whoever is coming at them as well? Let me know what you think in the comments. And just today, there has been even more information coming out about season two, specifically this time, episode titles. The greatblight.com contributor and co-host of the Queers of Time podcast, Rational Nerd on Twitter, posted some information that was found on the Writers Guild of America website. This was a list of episode titles for the Wheel of Time, including a bunch of episodes from season one and five different titles from what we can assume is season two. The five titles that were not a part of season one are... What Might Be, Strangers and Friends, Damani, spelled a little different than they do in the books, Daughter of the Night, and Eyes Without Pity. Now, there isn't much context other than that, but I think we can make some assumptions based on those titles, what the episodes might be about. What Might Be could have a couple meanings in my mind. I think the most likely option is that this is the title of the episode where Nynaeve's accepted test takes place. Another idea, however, and way cooler in my opinion if we get to see it, is that this is the flicker flicker scene in The Great Hunt when they move through the portal stone. But given that we're probably not going to see the portal stones, that's probably not it. Damani, even though it's not spelled correctly, is likely when Egwene is captured as a Damani. And Daughter of the Night is so clearly about Lanfear that I would imagine she features in that episode. So what are your thoughts on the episode titles? Let me know in the comments of the video. But that is it for the news today and all of the different drops. What did you think of all of this? Let me know in the comments of the video. Are you excited for season two? Yes or no? Again, please like the video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release more Wheel of Time content. I'll be releasing a lot of videos up until the release of the show. And of course, once season two is out, I'll have a ton coming out, breaking down all the episodes. So make sure you have that bell icon click as well. Thank you to my patrons for all of your support. You can become a patron and support the channel by heading to the link in the description of the video. Lastly, take a look at one of these videos here. You might like them. Until next time, peace out.